Why are there literally no tutorials on making foam on YouTube? I mean, why? One of the reasons is that foam is very hard to make and not necessarily because it's complex. Yes, it has many nodes, but it's just so slow to render. So I will be using a cloud PC service called Wagon, which gives me a nice and fast GPU. And they are not sponsors of this video, but they genuinely make this video possible because it is disastrous to work on that foam with a CPU. So if you want to try that too, I have a link which gives you five hours of computer usage uh, for free, and that should be enough to follow the tutorial. So let's start. First, if you have to add Add some foam what do we do well we add a mesh to add those uh, bubbles onto so I'm gonna add just a back plate like here for example size of four and let's add a meta ball they aren't getting too much love I mean they aren't used too much but this time we're gonna use them heavily so let's take this uh, meta ball here and let's just uh, make something that looks like foam maybe here I'm gonna drag those both down on the z-axis so this foam looks like that. And then I'm gonna duplicate maybe um, one more here, drag it on the Z axis. Yeah, let's say this is our foam, right? And I'm gonna go to the Metaball settings here and change the resolution viewport to something smaller so that it is uh, smoother now. So uh, you can see the edge isn't as jagged as it was before. So now we can convert this into a mesh. You don't have to do that, but I'm gonna do that because uh, when we are going to displace some bubbles afterwards, we need some um, geometry to work with, some actual geometry. So I'm going to convert them to mesh from that menu here. And now we have actual uh, vertices and edges and faces. So let's open a shading window from here because this is going to be purely shader based and very procedural also. Just some quick like things that are necessary. I mean, you have to use uh, cycles, of course, because this doesn't work with Eevee and you also need to use your GPU. So finally, I can use a GPU in Blender because I've done all of my Blender work on a CPU so far. I'm gonna use Optics and the Tesla T4 from the Wagon uh, Cloud Computer. Now let's take this uh, Metaball thing here and let's start with this foam. So I'm gonna delete the principal BSDF and let's add a Voronoi texture. And now you're asking me, why do I need a Voronoi texture? If you look at foam or like a piece of foam, you see we need bubbles, right? So bubbles basically, they look like that. I think you agree with me. Basically it's just some like, you know, dots somewhere. And if you add a bump here, I'm gonna zoom in. If you add a bump here, connect this to the height, you see we have like holes and if you invert this we have something like bubbles right very large and intersecting so to fix that what we need to do is to first add a math node to invert those and i'm not going to invert here and you see in a minute why so i'm going to use a subtract node here and i'm going to put the thing here in the bottom socket so basically this is going to subtract uh, the white areas from a value of 0 0.5 so this means uh, when the white areas have a stronger value this is going to result in something black right uh, we have like bubbles here right but this isn't having any effect on the bump why well that's because the bump node has no problems uh, with taking all sorts of values and making them bumpy or making them look like this bump here so i can have any value here and although this is looking like very dark or just uh, this also might be super uh, white, if I, for example, put uh, here like 5000, this is white, very bright, and the bump is still gonna work. Well, that's because we haven't clamped. So if I clamp this, the story is different. When I drag this, then I can control the size of those bubbles. So if I put something like 0.3 here, you see we have bubbles here, right? And this all works pretty uh, well. So if I add, for example, a glossy shader here, and I'm gonna uh, preview it like that, then you see we have bubbles, but they are not like bubbles, right? They are like pretty much like bubbles, but they should be more smooth. They are like uh, like little cones right now. So to fix that, what we need is a color ramp, a little latency here. We need color ramp and set it to B spline. So this means we're gonna get very smooth here. So you just are gonna drag this until the end and you see a lot of um, mess here. And that's just something you can fix with this value here. So you're gonna drag this value, right? Um, until you see some bubbles like that. And these are gonna be like the first bubbles we have, the largest ones. But what if you want to look at this foam from an angle, then, this bubble is here, right? And this just disappears, it's so flat. And that's because this is bump, this is faking. And we're gonna get real here. So what we're gonna do 
is delete this pump here. We don't need that. We need displacement instead. So we need actual geometry to be displaced uh, where there are bubbles. So I'm going to plug the displacement here and the value, which was uh, beforehand going to the bump, is now going to the uh, height. Yes, to the height. And what has happened? Nothing. This is still the same thing. I can increase the scale but this is still looking, well, not very good. So the fixation here is gonna be going to the settings of the material and under this uh, displacement thing here, this might be cut off, uh, I don't know if it is, but I think it might be. Basically under displacement here, you have bump only and displacement only. So I'm gonna set it to displacement only. This is like very, very strange here, what has happened. Let's take the scale down to one and okay, we have something very, um, sad and small in the middle here and that's because the mid level is messed up so let's put zero here and now this is going better and let's increase the scale to for about five but this isn't very good we need more geometry and to have more geometry we have to use the experimental feature set and now if you go to this uh, modifier menu here menu here you can select subdivision surface and more than that, you can select adaptive subdivision. So right now the dicing scale is one pixel and in viewport, this is eight pixels. I'm gonna set it to 0.5 so that I get a little bit more details out of that. I'm gonna decrease the roughness. And these are pretty much like bubbles. What we need to do now is that we have to make sure that the scale is right. So let's put 10 here. And does that seem okay to me? Well, 10 is for about the nice scale. Maybe even 15 seems to be good for those bubbles. Yeah, 15, 15 is, okay, is an okay number. So now we have the displacement for the uh, bubbles here. We need more of those. And basically this would just mean we're gonna duplicate this and add more of those Voronoi textures with a different scale. But first what you have to do is uh, during my my numerous experiments I discovered that actually you have to add some more variation to the scale of those bubbles because otherwise this is not going to look very realistic. To do that what we have to do is to basically change this uh, subtract value here for each bubble separately. So for example if the scale if the value here is bigger we probably have bigger bubbles which is correct as you see and if this is very very small then we have um, smaller bubbles so we just have to have a texture that it has different values for each bubble so for example here it has different value here it has a different value and for this bubble also basically we need a texture like that like the skin of a rhino probably looks like that also. We can do that using the color from the same Voronoi texture. So this has a different map for each bubble and we can make this black and white and control this a bit more by using a color ramp. So I'm gonna put the color ramp down here and then just as you see, this is black and white and I'm gonna map those values. So the smallest one is gonna be zero and the biggest one is gonna be 0 0.01. So exactly the same value that we have in this math node here. So I'm gonna put those, uh, put this into this value here and let's preview how this looks. Well, now we have control over uh, the scale or the amount of those things. So I can make everybody have like pretty much the same scale like you see here. Or I can track this here and I can move this handle here and I can control the amount of those bubbles. So I'm gonna move this around here because I don't wanna have too much of those bubbles and I'm actually gonna make them a bit uh, bigger. So something like that. These are gonna be my, uh, my big bubbles, right? Now let's add the next level of bubbles. So I'm gonna take all of that here and just duplicate this with Shift D. And now we have to find a way to put both of those in this displacement node. How do we do that? Well, usually there is a math node that can help us. And let's see what works here in case of using the addition. This creates something, this is exactly the same thing as up here. So basically we're just adding the double displacement. Not a very good idea. So I'm gonna use uh, eight here for the scale of the Voronoi. And you see we have smaller bubbles, right? And this is looking fine and all, but they are first um, very, Mm, prominent. I mean, they are very, like, uh, they are very pronounced, right? So we have to make them a bit smaller. And to do that, we need to multiply them. So let's use a multiplication afterwards. And for example, if I multiply this with 0.5, I make them half as high. But there is a formula 
for like the correct ratio so that the smaller bubbles also have the same height and width ratio than the um, bigger bubbles and this can be obtained if you look at the scale of the first one this is three and the scale of the second one this is eight so here we have to type three divided by eight which is going to give us such a number as you see here and this is going to make sure that the bubbles are looking for about the same actually it seems to me that we can increase the scale here so let's put like uh, 25 here yes this is looking better right now the next problem is that you know a smaller bubble just happens to be on the bigger bubble how do you fix that for that let's not use add but let's use um, maximum which means that it's going to basically take those two values and those two values are going to fight which means that the stronger one is going to win and because we have multiplied the bottom one with a relatively small number this means the upper one the uh, bigger bubble here is stronger so this one is going to win and this is going to take the place of the smaller bubble and this works everywhere i mean if the value is smaller it's just going to be crushed by the bigger one so uh, everything has its own place right now and let's start adding more of those bubbles so let's duplicate uh, this thing here put it down here and let's use a different scale for example let's use 16 and let's combine them using maximum so I'm gonna put the maximum after the multiplication here and I wanna drag the uh, the smallest bubbles here and also gonna mix them using maximum right uh, but they have to be a bit more weak otherwise they're gonna clash so I'm gonna put here 3 divided by 16 because 16 is the scale of the Voronoi texture here. So this seems to be working, right? Let's add another set of bubbles. So I'm gonna take those uh, those things here, I'm gonna duplicate those. Let's take a maximum node, put it here. Let's take a multiplication from here. And let's use different scale also, for example, um, 24. And let's uh, put here three divided by 24. And let's continue adding those uh, bubbles. Actually, I'm gonna drag those color ramps uh, here so that we can have more of those bubbles and we don't have to add so much layers, so many layers, but we can just um, add, for example, only five of them. Yes, this seems to be nice. And now let's add the last level of the bubbles. Copy this once more and let's take the maximum and let's mix it with uh, the one down here. Let's use for the scale for example uh, 40 3 divided by or with 40 and as you see we have the bubble reflections ready because the glossy shader is only for the reflections and now you're asking me how do i only keep the reflections uh, how do i remove this metallic -y thing in the middle here well for that we can use a mix shader so i'm gonna go up here and taking this glossy i'm gonna use a mix shader and let's mix the glossy with a transparent shader. So transparent, uh, put it here. And now we can drag this, uh, this slider here and we can control, for example, I'm gonna type here 0 0.95. And this means we only have the, like we have a little bit of reflections, but mostly we have a transparent film. So this is very good for some uh, foam because we have to see through the foam, right? But there is a problem and the problem is that the foam has this uh, film between those bubbles and this is also having reflections and we don't want that. So I'm going to use as the factor uh, the, uh, the displacement map which looks like that. Actually this looks different, it's just very very dark. So I'm going to increase the exposure and you can see it looks... Okay, this is minus 10 for some reason. So yeah, this looks like that, right, like a displacement map. And we're going to use this as the factor. So um, to make this actually visible, I'm going to use a math node. I'm going to put the exposure back to zero. And I'm going to take the maximum value from here. I'm going to multiply this with a number, for example, let's say uh, 5000. Right. And let's see how this looks. This is obviously visible and also very very bright so i'm going to clamp this because the factor only needs a range between 0 and 1 not 0 and 5000 so i'm going to use this uh, this clamped 
monstrosity here as the factor. And let's see how this looks right now. Now we have holes where we should have reflections and this isn't a good thing at all. So I'm gonna use a color ramp here and put this after the multiplication and I'm gonna invert the handles so that I have the inverted map. And now we only have the bubbles, but the reflections are far too strong. So I'm gonna use, uh, let's see where the bubbles are, which color do they have? They have the color of black. So this means that we are just gonna take this black handle here and I'm gonna increase the value to around 0.5 as it was before, uh, 0.95. And as you see, we have reflections of only the bubbles and not anything in between. So basically we have accomplished the reflection part. Now we only need the volume. And for the volume, we basically just need a volume scatter shader. So let's add a scatter, volume scatter, and let's plug this to the volume and let's see what happens, right? So this is plugged in and this looks basically like something very hazy and foggy. And let's increase the density so we can see this better, for example, 50. And this is like, um, let's say something slimy, like a milk, which has like those raindrops on it. What we need to do is to only have the volume in places where there are no bubbles. So in between bubbles, we need to have volume. And to do that, well, for that we have a mask, right? You see here, this is the mask and it looks like, uh, you know, it is inverted. So basically we have a lot of volume in the places of the bubbles and not so much in between them, exactly zero. So let's plug this into the density and let's see the madness which is going to happen, which is going to happen, hopefully. It will happen, yes. So we have volume only in the uh, in the bubbles, not very nice. So I'm gonna add a, what is it called? An invert node, and this is gonna invert the volume. So now this is looking like that. And then I'm gonna add another multiplication node so that I can increase the density where needed. Right now this is clamped, not very nice. So I'm gonna put, for example, 10 here and remove the clamp. So now the density can be bigger than uh, one. And look at that, we have some foam here. Now what you can also do is that if this is a, um, a soap foam, you can search the glossy shader, which is uh, lost here. Yes, the gloss is here. And you're gonna take a noise texture and you're gonna use this as the color. So uh, the noise color as we all know, looks pretty much like that. So uh, let's use this as the color of the glossy shader. And let's preview how this looks. Probably like soap. Yeah, this has a bit of like iridescence or what's the word for that thing? I believe iridescence. Yes, so you see the reflections are a bit more um, colorful right now. So that's how you make uh, soap foam. The uh, coffee foam will be available on Patreon. And also if you're interested in using, uh, using a high performance computer like I'm using here, then you can use my referral link in the description. But anyways, I hope you learned something uh, soapy from here and go wash your hands and be safe. So have a nice time.